I heard this AEW show was great. Was it? Yeah. That's what I thought. Opened up with a Hangman Page championship celebration where Hangman Page had to give the, the, the children in the audience a chat just like I did. You deserve it as stupid, he said. I earned it. Not those exact words, but that, that's what he meant. And then the fans chanted, you earned it. And I hope they never chant, you deserve it again. It's a stupid chant. It's true. This ain't some. It's supposed to be a sport. Oh, you go to the Olympics and you win a gold medal in, in wrestling? And you want some bloke to tell you you deserve that medal? You earned that medal. Damn right, with a broken freaking what neck. What do you think this is, an Oscar? <laughs> what about a Tony? So anyway, then uh, he is uh, interrupted by Brian Danielson. And uh, this was very clever because what they needed was a authority figure to not allow this match to take place tonight. But they don't have one. And so the men had to find a way to have Hangman Page not have a match with Brian Danielson tonight, but have Brian Danielson get booed and Hangman Page get cheered. And they pulled it off. Danielson used the easiest heel line ever. After I won the championship at WrestleMania. <laughs> so great. I got the biggest heat on the show. And uh, they had a big pull apart, and they will be wrestling down the road. Brian Danielson killed Evil Uno. And then afterwards, he announced, I'm going to run through every single member of the Dark Order. I'm going to kick all of their heads in on the way to getting my match with the Hangman. And next week, it's going to be that rare day in AEW where a man does not win in his hometown. Colt Cabana will be facing Brian Danielson in Chicago. And it's going to be a long night for old Colt. But I'll bet the match is going to be awesome. MJF video. He teased that he wanted to be next in line for the AEW title. He will not be, but I would not be surprised if, uh, I don't want to say it's coming sooner rather than later, but it's coming sooner than much later. How about that? Eddie Kingston did a promo, hyping up a match with Daniel Garcia. Then we had Orange Cassidy and Ishii versus The Butcher in The Blade. I told the story when I went to New Japan Battle in the Valley about the young lass that was sitting in front of me with her boyfriend, and she spent the entire show looking like she wanted to be anywhere but at a wrestling show, on her phone, going here, going there. But then the main event was a Shii, and Shii did his a Shii gimmick, and the match ended, and she's clapping along, and she was, like, so into the match. That's what a Shii does with his Ishii gimmick. And he did his greatest hits here. And like early on in the match, nobody cared. And by the end of the match, when he was running wild, I mean, they were super into this match. So he's the greatest. And uh, he got the win. They didn't give Orange Cassidy the win. And Orange Cassidy is signed, and Ishii is in for the time. So he got the big win there. But of course, he's he's he wasn't going to lose, but he didn't necessarily need to get the pin. But they gave him the pin. Hey, how'd you know that wasn't for Jay White? How do I know what wasn't for Jay White? Her. Because he lost. She was so? cheering when he won and got handed the title. She was happy yeah, for the guy. Takes two to ten. Get out of here with your Jay White bias. Hmm. I'm a big fan of the guy. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, I'm telling you f just the facts of the matter. I'm a man of facts, Mike. <laughs> and Andrade, an FTR interview. They're going to be doing an eight man. We'll talk about that here in a while. Promos with Ty and Britt Baker. Uh, Britt Baker will not allow. The words Thunder Rosa to be spoken. So you know that's where they're going probably for the February pay-per-view. Nyla Rose beat Hikaru Shida in the TBS tournament. And boy, this was one of those matches where the crowd gasped when Hikaru Shida got pinned. They were not expecting her to lose this match. But she did. And it was all because of Serena Deeb, who attacked her knee allowing Nyla Rose to put her in the stretch muffler for the victory. It was a good match. A lot of good matches here on the show. Do I need to say that Brian Danielson versus Eva Luna was a good match, or can we just kind of know that? We know that. Okay. MJF promo. This was awesome. He's doing his promo. He wants to be next in line for the title. And all of a sudden, CM Punk's music hits. And CM Punk comes down to the ring, and he gets in the ring with MJF. And, of course, you think... Oh, my God, two of the greatest talkers in wrestling. They're just going to have this promo battle and all promo battles. But instead, MJF with his cocky grin just goes, Maxwell offers a hand. 
And Punk looks at him, and he smiles, and he just turns and walks away. And MJF is furious, and the fans in the front row are laughing at this burn. What a burn. It was awesome. And they will talk down the road. Darby Allen will be running through the gun club. Because, in fact, wins and losses matter in AEW. Darby lost, and he gets the gun club. MJF won, and he gets CM Punk. <laughs> and no, no, chat, that, that didn't come from you guys. That was from me. Uh, well, you're rushing Dante Martin beat the acclaimed. I may have fell asleep during the show last night. Did Dave say this match shouldn't have been on television or gotten time? Is that what he said? I hope not. This match was great. Yeah. Leo Rush and Dante uh... Martin are the most awesome team. And, you know, Acclaim did a very good job. Max Caster's rap always pops me. And uh, Dante, the double springboard moonsault. Rush hit the frog splash. Loved it. And then Team Taz tried to recruit Dante again. So Friday, non-spoiler, we got Darby versus Billy Gunn, Jade Cargill versus Red Velvet in the tournament, and Jurassic Express versus Adam Cole and Bobby Fish. And then for Dynamite, we have got Danielson, Colt Cabana, Thunder Rosa, Jamie Hayter, and Lucha Brothers, Cody, and Pac versus Andrade, Malachi, and FTR in an eight-man then the main event was Sammy Guevara and Jay Lethal. You'll be stunned to hear that the match was great. Jay Lethal is a great worker. Sammy Guevara is is out of his cotton picking mind. Is that what they used to say? He's just nuts. They used to say he did that big. Uh, he did a, a a tope off the post through a table to the outside. He missed. He got the knees up on the shooting star, so his ribs are hurting. Jay Lethal works over his ribs the entire match. I mean, this was great. And then, of course, he hit the GTH and got the win. I hope he did not break the jaw of Jay Lethal because there was a f jumping knee that is what put Jay Lethal on the uh, table in the first place. And he did the jumping knee, and, man, his knee went right in Jay Lethal's jaw. And Jay Lethal's holding his jaw after the match, so I hope the guy's all right. But a great match, a great debut for Jay Lethal, and uh, great dynamite. It wins this week. If you're wondering <laughs> it's a tremendous show i thought and i think people are going to get too hung up on numbers i already saw it in the forum uh today that people are already starting to overanalyze segments without us even knowing the numbers for them yet and this was not a red hot incredible spectacular coming off a pay-per-view show but it was excellent in setting the table. Like I kind of compared it to it was not a big pop hit. This was a great jazz piece, you know, that it was elongated out. And when you look at the entirety of the thing, when you have Brian Danielson and you know the direction you're going with him and he's tied in with, with Hangman Page and you got the celebration in and we saw Eddie Kingston and we saw this and we saw that. They did a great job, I thought. Great debut by Jay Lethal the MJF promo that they had after the one that they showed after the pay-per-view on Saturday, in addition to the deal with punk, where we have another direction with punk going forward, which also gives you layers on the MJF Wardlow storyline. If you kind of look ahead at that. So Serena Deeb and her car Ushita, you got that going. You set up the piece for Nyla Rose going into the finals and it just everything I thought worked really well. Now, Tomohiro Ishii, to me, and we'll see what the numbers are, you could tell that the crowd, even if they didn't know who this guy was or, or, or really, the, he got them involved in the match. I'm not sure, and I'm a big fan of this guy, and I've been watching him for a long time. I'm not sure if people that are casual or more casual AEW fans that don't really know who this guy is, I'm not sure if... He set the world on fire as far as changing any of those people's minds. I think he's one of those people that sometimes you got to see live. With that said, it doesn't really matter because this is a piece to get to, very likely, Okada, which they mentioned. They didn't oversell it. They mentioned it, and that's what this opens the door to. So a nice layer laid out there. So everything I thought worked really well, and I think people are already getting hyper-sensitive about 
oh, man, you know, what's Dante Martin's segment going to do? Should he have been there? But yes. Yes, actually, Leo Rush, and he should be on every show right now. And that's the other thing. They do a good job because they have such a big roster. you got to rotate guys in on the undercard. This time it's the gun club. we got Taz and, and that group back on TV now, now being involved. So, again, I thought top to bottom it was a really, really great show. And it will be forgotten about in the grand scheme of things. But the bottom line is they set their table really nice after a pay-per-view for Everything going forward. I'm over here tweeting. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's going on there? Just wanted to throw out that uh, the co-host spot for the Brian and Vinny show and the Intercontinental Championship replica are up right now on my Twitter at Brian Alvarez if you want to bid. There's actually a week left on the belt. Uh, the co-host spot is uh, two days and 23 hours, so basically three days left. But if you want to support Whale Scout, you can uh, bid on those things. What about Oreo? Really appreciate it. Well, we're going to do crowdfunding for Oreo. It's not set up yet. Ah, okay. And I'll have uh, autographed Death of WCW and autographed uh, 100 Things WWE Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die. I think the link for the uh, fundraiser site that will have all of that stuff is probably going to be available soon. I'll tweet it when I get it. But we appreciate everybody who's donated so far. And yes, for those that have asked, if you just want to donate directly to Whale Scout, whalescout.org. There's a giant donate button on the bottom. And uh, you can donate that way as well. A couple of uh, some feedback here, of which we always have an abundance. I noticed that Kenny Omega said that he had not rewatched his match with the Hangman, which means he doesn't know, perhaps, that the Young Bucks came out and gave Hangman the nod. I like that. That's he one of those also, small things that's important. Yeah, he also cut off Adam Cole during this segment last night, so something is brewing. You know, it's it's interesting that uh, Kyle O'Reilly's deal is up soon, and Bobby Fish is currently in AEW with Adam Cole. And I keep talking about these six-man titles, but you're not going to get the entire Undisputed. And maybe they won't even want to do that. But, I mean, they've acknowledged so much between Adam Cole and, and Bobby Fish. No, I mean, they like trios until otherwise noted. I'm trying to figure out who the third person is going to be with Lethal and Nice. You could have uh, Cole and Fish and O'Reilly reuniting as a babyface trio in AEW after the Elite turns on Adam Cole. And there's no hurry, by the way. This doesn't need to happen imminently. They plant seeds for stuff, like, years down the road. I don't think it'll be years before they turn Adam Cole babyface because he's so popular. But someday, it's this seed will flower. I like that. Lethal Nice and John Cena, yes. Again, maybe it's just that as a Canadian who has always had health insurance, this doesn't seem, Max, smart enough, to this, be a big this deal. This is going to go into the best of right here, Lance. Yeah. You're being corralled away by uh, by this dog. By a dog trying to eat my wife's uh, boots. Oh, man. Oh, they said they must be tasty. Yeah, if my wife gets home and her good leather boots are chewed up, I'm dead. You'll be chewed up next. Yeah, I'll be living outside with the dog. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.